We got let in. You're on mute, Kevin. Apologies to everyone. There was a little bit of a technical difficulty at the very last minute. Um, I'm going to assume, given that uh, usually we have to wait for a few folks to uh, to sign in. Uh, in this case, I think it's the opposite. I think we've had everybody waiting for the host to sign in. Apologies to everyone. We should have put up uh, AP. Uh, didn't have a flag handy at home, so uh, please accept my apologies. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome back uh, Nick and the Predictwin team uh, for the second of our three-part uh, seminar. Uh, for those who were on last night, uh, I hope and I think everybody got a lot out of it and there's a lot more to uh, dig into tonight. I know I've used PredictWin for some routing in the past and I could use uh, a refresher and a walkthrough and some tips. So uh, I assume that everybody else <clears throat> will get just as much out of it. Since we're already late, I'm just going to turn it right over to you, Nick, and um, not waste any more of our time. Take it away. Oh, well, thanks very much. And um, yeah, lucky we didn't end up with an AP over A. That would have been bad. <clears throat> so yeah, no, very happy to be here. Um, yeah, so today we are going to talk briefly about SATCOMs. Um, you know, there's probably plenty of questions there, I imagine, from people. Uh, we do have Kieran, um, who's done a couple of laps of the planet uh, in a boat. Um, in the for, in the Q and A today, um, so she, if you do have any questions, definitely um, chuck them in there. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about yeah satcoms, then we're going to talk about polars, and then we're going to talk about weather routing. And you know, we kind of if you if you weren't here yesterday or you were, we did touch on weather routing a bit, and we're just really going to go through that a lot more slowly today and in a lot more detail, um, especially around the polar stuff, and then you know, and we'll look at the weather routing. Um, so yeah, we're definitely more focused on racing today. And um, so yeah, so let's jump into it. I'll do a screen share. And I'll move my Zoom tools. So yeah, yesterday we... Um, you know, we talked about the apps, so we had the Predict Wind app and the um, the Offshore app. Again, today, a lot of what we go through will be in the um, Predict Wind website, and we will jump over to the Offshore app later. So for anyone that uh, doesn't wasn't here yesterday or doesn't remember, we use the Predict Wind app when we're at home uh, at the marina in Wi-Fi range, and we know that we're not going out of Wi-Fi range. As soon as we're going out of Wi-Fi range, uh, we use the offshore app, whether we've got a SAT connection or not, because it saves our data. Hi, Kevin. It's Kieran from Predict Wind. Have you ever, has anyone else lost Nick, or is it just uh, me? I think I've lost. I, for a moment, I wasn't sure whether I got lost or Nick got lost, but I think I think Nick is the one that we've that we've dropped. Okay, we'll just give him a second to try and come back online. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'll have to take over, and I'm not a hundred percent sure what he was talking about. So, <laughs> um. I'll just let him try and rejoin and then we'll go from there. Is that all right? Yeah, it looks like he dropped off. So if he can yep. jump back on. Uh... It looks like and he's, he's back. Yep. You're uh, on mute. But muted. But muted. Well, I haven't. Did I disappear? 
We lost you. Did. Great. Okay, I'll go back to my screen share and keep talking about what I was talking about. Where'd you get to? Um, you just brought up the screen with the map, the split screen, and we're talking about when you do weather routing on what devices. Cool. Sorry. Um, there we go. Yeah, so it seemed great to me. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going good. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, SATCOMs. So you will talk about Starlink, the Iridium Go exec, which is uh, the newer version of the Iridium Go. If you've got an Iridium Go, you can still use that. Um, yeah, if you have Starlink, it's super fast. You can download as much weather data as you want. Um, as often as you want and you know without any uh, great sort of penalty there um it's um yeah high power draw so whether you could run that on your race boat lots of race boats don't have um you know solar panels uh all over them um and obviously at night you're gonna um you know not have that that power um you know and i guess yeah so if you've got one good if you're comfortable to use it great um you can still do everything that we're going to talk about today and 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 you know faster uh but you know there is a few things to consider so as i mentioned power we'll just go down here uh, somewhere here yeah so yeah your power draw um you know is it you can't take it with you in an emergency um is it waterproof and um you know voice calls you know basically if you hop off your boat and you want to do uh, make voice calls which is usually the case in an emergency situation uh you ideally want to have either a backup unit or just run on an iridium um unit so i'll talk about the go exec um what we like about it is that it is portable. It does run off a battery, uh, and it has is low power draw uh, even when it's charging. Uh, but you know you could get uh, a long way through the race without even having it plugged in. Um, portability, waterproof. Um, yeah, it's. If I was doing the race, I would have one of these. Uh, again, you can get plenty of data and for the length of the race you could probably smash it pretty hard yes you will go through it but that's sort of um compared to uh, a new jib or anything like that it's pretty cheap so yeah it's a new new iridium product it's not the same as starlink it's not even trying to compete with it it's sort of got a unique feature set which is definitely um suited to onboard use um and yeah, pretty cool. Um, if you have the old Go exec, uh, sorry, the old Iridium Go, you can still use that. Um, it's just a lot slower. And, you know, and we, we will talk about that and how we use that with the um, the offshore app. And um, yeah, we'll go through, we'll go through sort of the settings that you need in the offshore app for that. But yeah, if it were me, I would 100% have one of these execs on board um just because i've used it and it's it's pretty awesome for uh on a boat there's all pricing and stuff there if you if you're interested in getting one and um yeah so if this if you've got some more questions about that you can definitely ask Karen that in the q a um and then we do have information about the iridium go as well so, but what we really want to talk about is weather routing, how we use it, uh, what we, um, you know, what, what, why we use it, um, and how we can sort of uh, set it up and um, base some basic understanding of it. So, I guess if I were to look at this map here, you know, and and go, okay, I'm starting the race. Let's say now. Um, if I just press play on these wind maps, I've got two models there. And I look at this and I just go, you know, like there is literally no way in my mind that I could work out the fastest way to sail up here in my boat, you know, to be in each, when I was going to be in each 
different wind condition, at what time, you know, where to position myself, what sort of wind angles I would be, you know, be getting. Um, you know, I would just end up, and so you see we've run out of the NAM um, forecast run length there. Um, you know, I just, I just wouldn't be able to position myself. I'd probably end up basically sailing up the rum line, um, which sometimes works, but <laughs> most of the time it doesn't. So, you know, positioning yourself for all the different, uh, you know, for where you're going to be, the different wind um, shifts and changes of direction and all that sort of thing. Really, we need to use a weather routing tool. Um, you know, in the, you know, racing navigators have been doing, you know, doing some form of weather routing for a pretty long time. Um, at Predict Wind, we've been, uh, we've had a weather routing tool for about eight years um, and we've developed that over that time, um, we do have uh, one person whose job is working on our weather routing algorithm and the features within that. Um, and so that's we're very lucky to be able to have that amount of effort put into it, um, and it makes it a super powerful tool. Um, yeah, it's it's very it's very cool. So yeah, as you say, I mean, I don't, you know, when the weather router does its calculations. It's actually looking at every possibility. Um, sure, you may not need to look at every possibility to make it from one end of the lake to the other, but it's you know it will if, if it's a minute faster to go one way or the other, it'll give you the faster way by that minute. But generally, the the time difference that you would get using a a, a routing tool versus not is you know it, more than uh, more than race winning. So anyway, let's get into it. So we've I've come to the weather routing tool. Um, I'm in the Predict Wind uh, forecast website, and I think this is where we really want to start if we're going to use this tool. Um, and if you have never used this before, um, Kieran, I was actually thinking that we we actually have a promo code at the moment that you can actually uh, get a free trial, and I was thinking that you should you could put that in the chat would be um, pretty handy. So that if you want to go and have a go at this after we've done this webinar, you can. Um, you'll get I think it's like a, a week or something of the of a pro sub, so you can actually come in here, have a go with the weather routing, and see whether it's something that you want to invest in. Um, so yeah, we, we want to start using the weather router in the, the, the forecast website or in the app because it's just easier to get started um, and we can set up our boat and we can sit there instead of working, we can run weather routes all day, <clears throat> playing around with different things and, um, you know, looking like we're really busy. Excuse me, I'll just have a drink. So anyhow, I'm up here. Um, we've, you know, we're in tools, weather routing, and I'm gonna go up here to routing preferences, and you'll see we've got a bunch of different things we can turn on and off here. We've got first of all at the top here. Well, actually, we can show we can change whether the map follows the boat. So as in, whenever the boat moves, it will always be in the center of the map. So the map sort of moves, and the boat stays in the center of the map. Uh, I don't, I, I do that when I'm on here, and then funnily enough, when I'm in the offshore app, I don't like that as much. Um, show extreme weather warnings. Uh, something I didn't talk about yesterday um, was the weather warnings, you know, so we get anything from, um, you know, the high, the high, I actually had to mention weather warnings, but I don't, don't think I mentioned in the routing, the routing will show you warnings along your route. So whether that's vertical acceleration, roll, boat slamming, um lightning um you know uh, uh, like a big difference between the average and the uh oh am i still alive um whether it's a big difference between the average and the gusts um that will sh that that will come up as a warning <clears throat> so yeah so we can turn them on and off whether they'll show on our route uh, you'll see here we have fastest time and comfort. Um, comfort is a, a cruising 
thing, you know, for people that don't uh, want to sail around bad weather. Personally, I don't use it at all. Um, I would rather that we routed for the fastest time and then used our seamanship if there was something that we saw within the route that we didn't like, then we might run the route again with some waypoints or or whatever um, to avoid anything that we wanted to avoid. So yeah, fastest time, you're going racing, you want fastest time, of course. Uh, I'll just move my zoom controls. So, and then we have these adjustments. And so if you are sailing and for whatever reason, you, you know, you're during the race, um, and you can do this in the offshore app as well. You, um, you know, let's say you blow out your A1 or or whatever. You know, you 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 carry your code zero for too long and blow the tack out, or you know, break the tack line, or you know, not that I would have ever done anything like that. Um, you know, something something breaks, and you actually just need to your pole is no longer uh, accurate. You know, let's say it was a kite, you could you could say, well, actually, we can only do 90% of our polar now. So you could actually change this to, you know, 95%. And so that would be 5% slower in the routing. Um, there is a, a, a setting here for at night. Um, and again, it, depending on um, how good you are, you may actually want to, to turn that down a little bit at night. You know, sailing at night is a lot harder than sailing during the day just because it's such a visual thing. Uh, tack and jibe penalties, we can add those in. So if, for instance, if it was an upwind race and the router was putting a lot of, lot of tacks in there, you could actually increase that. So that's in seconds. And it would actually put less less tax in or if your boat is particularly slow at tacking you might want to increase that um so that the you know you're not you're not tacking and driving too much um you know that could be a real consideration if you're a two-handed sailor for instance so there's some of the sort of the basic things that we can change on our polar but before we do anything we do need to come and select our polar. Um, I'm on the predefined setting here. And if I click on this box, I've got all of these different types of boats here. Um, there's some generic ones up here. Um, and then all sorts of different boats. If your boat isn't in here, um, boat that I sail on, it's a custom boat. Uh, it's not in here. And but what I did start with was we're 35 footer and I started with the far 40 polar um, because I knew that we had pretty similar performance to the far 40 and then I adjusted my polar from there. So there's lots of different boats in here, even if you know you've got a, a TP 52, you, you know, you probably got uh, polars if you. Uh, and if, if we're not if they're not in here, you can actually get polars from your designer, usually. Um, so yep, choose one that's either your boat or similar to it, um, and that can be your starting point. So I've selected that there, um, and I can copy that to the the advanced polar. So I've clicked that across. Um, I should mention here that we do have our um, our polar curve. Um, you know, if you're if you if your boat's ORC rated or IRC, you should have um, polars, and you know you can you can add them in here. Um, I should talk about adding them. Anyhow, uh, so if I come over here to I've copied that to the advanced. If I click on advanced, um, those polars, those base polars from the predefined have moved across here into the chart and I can adjust them. And, you know, for me, I would actually um, take out um, this 30 degree um, true wind angle and just leave my target upwind angles as my starting point. Um, so you can see here, these are my targets. And 
so in you know eight knots here at true true wind angle of uh, 42 uh the boat speed is 6.5 knots and so if, if you've sailed on a boat a fair bit you will have a pretty good idea of what some of these numbers are you might not have as good or uh, you know as clear idea once you get through here but see we've got 70 then 75 then 80 we don't actually need that many you know you can you cannot you don't need to over complicate this you don't need uh true wind angles for you know for i mean you know boat speed for every you know five degrees uh it's not necessary um the polar were, will interpolate between those points and so yeah you may want to put some around a, a key area that you know that your boat likes to sail in um but yeah and same here with the the downwind um you know the running angles um you know the boat i sail on we we we, we can run very deep if we've got a um you know running kite on because it's an older boat um but yeah you can take these out if you want to you know i don't actually want to sail anywhere near 180 these are my target downwind angles so you can set this up you can come back and adjust it at any time you just adjust the numbers in here um and it's a, a nice way to do it if you do have polars from you know an orc certificate for instance you can import them into here to import your polar you can also export your polar and fiddle around with it and look at it if you want to so yeah uh we do have probably should have talked about the data hub before we do have a product called the data hub it can actually plug into your nmea backbone record all of your data um from your nmea and uh, you know so, uh, all the data sources in there it can record them and it can also update your polar so uh if you wanted that to happen automatically it's a very uh, a very cool way of doing it uh, again that's new since last year um, and is a nice way to um, update your polars yeah so anyway we've got our polars all set there I'm just going to go back to the predefined um, FAR40 for this um, webinar and you see here we have a motoring setting obviously we're racing we're not going to be motoring um, so, but you know, if you if you're on the way your way home or whatever, if you're going through, uh, you know that it's going to be a, a trip that looks light for a patch or two. Um, you can actually have the motoring setting uh, set there, so your boat will motor at you know this speed whenever the sailing speed falls below four and a half knots, for instance. Uh, something I didn't talk about yesterday, but we did talk about uh, setting up yesterday, but we did talk about the um, the output of it is the wave polar. This is, I, I can't talk about this enough. Um, I love it. I had um, one of our rally partners um, on the phone yesterday. He just sailed from Australia to Numea and he was raving about how amazing it was um you know he had 30 boats in the fleet um and they could they had a personalized uh router overlook looking over the fleet as well and he said the the the, the routing guy had no idea compared to the information that that they had by using this wave tool so ignore this advanced wave polar over here you want to just enable the wave polar um, and if you want to adjust any of these settings here you actually need to be on the advanced polar so if I went to the advanced polar I can come down here I can change the displacement so if you've actually taken all the gear out of your boat you know all the squabs and whatnot and you know it's a bit lighter you might want to change this um, and just make it more accurate for your vessel you'll see here we do have uh, catamaran and powerboat and then 
just an explanation of of what the actual um, parameters are that we're asking for. Uh, we're not asking for your, the draft of your keel. We're actually asking for your hull draft. Uh, depth avoidance. I'm going to turn this back before I go back to there. Depth avoidance is using a C map contour, um, the brand C map, not a C map. Um, so it's pretty good. Uh, it's really, it's just, it's going to avoid any areas. The routing will avoid any areas um, that are below this depth, uh, above this depth. Um, we used to just use land, but obviously if your weather routing tool is sending you across islands and across land um, or areas that you can't sail, it's actually not giving you an accurate route. So, um, you know, it's something that you really want to look at um, because it makes a big difference to the, your routing outcomes. Um, we don't have tidal and ocean currents on the lake. Uh, we do have some advanced routing adjustments down here. I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend playing with this unless you really want to. The one thing that, and if you were, the one thing you could do was you could look at the true wind speed scale factor. So we actually put this in here for the Vendée sailors. Um, they like to fiddle around with this because they're going really long way, a really long way pretty quickly. Um, and they want to, you know, they want to sort of see if, oh, if the system went this way or this way, what would my route look like? And you can go back and compare your routes. They sometimes put the true wind speed scale factor up. Why do they do that? Because uh, as I mentioned yesterday, all of our routing and the wind maps are all average wind speeds. So if it was a particularly windy race, you'd run the routing and you knew it was going to be a particularly windy race, gusty, you might actually put this up to 110%. And so therefore it would might more accurately reflect the gusty conditions. Uh, the two true wind direction adjustment, I don't recommend you touching that. <laughs> but if you really wanted to, you could look at the true wind speed scale factor. I'd only use that if you knew it was going to be a windy race. And even then, with caution. I'm going to turn them off. So we've got our wave polar on. Um, we've got our dimensions. Uh, the router knows what our boat is. Uh, and how fast it's going to go in any condition. And so now we're ready to actually run a route. Um, so I'll click over here on weather routing. And um, we'll start looking at it. Uh, I need to move my Zoom controls. Here we go. So you'll see here, I've um, very roughly uh, chucked in some, some start and finish waypoints. So the green is my start waypoint. If I click on that, um, I can, this here flashes up with my lat long. If I click on edit, it actually uh, flashes up over here with my lat long. So if I wanted to, there's a few ways I could do this. This is, you know, not so much about the start. At the start, you've got a, a, um, a point on land that you want to, you know, that you know where you're starting. Um, but once you're underway, you want to be able to put your lat long in here. Uh, there's a few ways that we can do this. If I click on this button and I'm on a GPS enabled device, uh, you know, like an iPad, with the GPS, it will go to that position. Um, or I could enter my lat long, offer, um, you know, a device on board, or if I had an Iridium Go, it would put a little white dot on the map and I can just move this to the dot. Um, and you'll see there as I move that around, my lat long changes. So obviously we need to just, every time we run a route, we want this start waypoint to be exactly where we are so that we're getting good information. Uh, you'll see here, um, I haven't actually looked at your 
notice of race in your course. But I do seem to remember that you do have um, in the past that you do have a waypoint here. And you'll see that I have added this in and I have put it as a starboard rounding. So that means it's just going to leave it to starboard. If I left it as a go to way, waypoint, it, the routing would actually go to that point. That's not necessarily what we want. Um, there could be, you know, something in the forecast that means that we want to not go too close to that waypoint. Unlikely, but it, we want to just leave the router to do its thing. We don't want to be putting a whole lot of waypoints in <clears throat> unless there's you've got your own very specific ideas and you can put some waypoints in. Um, another way to oh, I'll just make sure we leave that as a starboard rounding. I think it's in the wrong place. Obviously, our red is there as well. Just make sure you don't have it sitting on the island. Um, you know, you put it in the water. Um, so another way to approach anything that we didn't want to, um, anywhere we didn't want to go, we could actually add a boundary. Uh, and so I should have zoomed in on the map, but, you know, so I can add an area and the router won't go there. So the router will obey that boundary um, and not go into that area. So if there was a particular, some sort, something that you knew about, some local knowledge that you knew, um, you could uh, put a boundary in that, you know, that you didn't want to, you didn't want to go to that area. We'll leave that boundary on there just so that if, if, if our routing does want to go there uh, when we run it, we'll just see that that, that does affect that. Um, while we're here, routes, I could um, go back on my previous routes, and um, and that's what I was saying about comparing uh, routes. When if, if we ran a bunch of different routes, we can go back and look at them. Uh, in the waypoints here, I can save my course. So for instance, if I want to save this course, I just click Save Course. I write, you know, the name in and it's done. Just click anywhere else. So that's sort of, you know, you want to set up some different courses, you're doing different races. Um, you'll see that I've got a whole lot in here from um, Tonga. I've got, you know, some around North Island races and whatnot that I've done over different different courses that I have set up. You know, especially these coastal ones down here, they, um, you know, lots of marks and whatnot. And you can export those courses. So you have, you know, if you're on the race committee or you've got some mates together, you can actually export all those waypoints and um, and share them. Okay, probably enough on waypoints and boundaries. So we'll leave that there. So we're we've got our start finish. We've got our course set up where we want to go, where we want, where we're starting from. Um, if we were planning for the race, we can change the start time. Um, you know, we can make that a date in the future um, or in a, in a time. So, but for now, let's just run with now um, and we'll, we'll go with that. So we've set up our polars. We got our start time. We've got our start and finish waypoints. Um, I think the next step is to is to run a route. So what this is doing now, this is running um, the route on the PredictWin servers. Uh, so what, and it's probably uh, something that you do need to understand what it's doing there, is that it sends all that information. It goes, oh, th this is Nick. He's got a far forty. He's here, he's got, he's put these different settings in and it sends that packet of information off to our servers and our servers calculate your route. Um, I'm told it's over a billion calculations for each route because uh, as I said before, it looks at every possibility and then across each, and when I say each route, I mean each different weather model. Um, but the key thing here is that it's going to use 
the most recent data, so the most, you know, recent groups or that, that it's got, so the most recent weather data, um, and it's going to use the highest resolution that it can. So yeah, we talked a bit about resolution yesterday. Resolution matters, um, you know, especially around land and in short time frames. It's really important. Uh, and so that can give you, it's basically going to give you the best route. Um, most other software that you're going to do routing on, you actually need to download the grubs and then run your route from there. And that could be great if, if that's, you know, if you wanted to, if you just wanted to get that data and then never update it. But the reality is, you know, new data is always going to be better. Um, and actually downloading that amount of data, you know, like it's um, a huge amount of data that it's using to, to, to calculate the route. So, you know, 60, 70 megabytes of data is used to, to crunch your route. So we've run our route and I'll zoom in. And you'll see here we've um, we've got a bit of a, a split in our routes. We, we're sailing upwind. The, um, and we have a warning. So we'll see what that is. And you'll see there that it's warning me about vertical acceleration, um, which doesn't surprise me too much because we're sailing upwind and you know we're on a we're on a pretty uh, shallow boat, uh, you know flat boat. Um, but really, what we want to look at here is that these all these different routes um, are saying different things. I would consider that this the blue one here, a PWG, is uh, probably the outlier uh, because. All of the other models want us to at least, you know, this one, uh, the, if I click on it, it'll change models. The UKMO uh, wants us to, to tack over first. Um, and then you'll see the, the PWE has it going very light. So if we go back in time, do we get that same change? No, we don't. Um, and so then we go and have a look at the Spire model. And let's have a look what it does. Yeah, you can sort of see why it's quite logical, why it thinks, this model thinks that we should go this way, uh, because we're going to get this right-hand shift and there's more breeze over the side than what it thinks over here. This is a pretty tricky situation. Um, but kind of cool as well. So then we've got the the ECMWF. Again, it looks it thinks pretty similar things are going to happen to the spire. Um, and then we've actually got the GFS, which is actually running the NAM model in here. Um, so a bit confusing there. We are going to um, hopefully have the NAM in the uh, offshore app before you race. Um, but again, we can see it wants us to come out here for the right-hand shift. So that's, you know, pretty interesting. Um, what we are looking at here is that these are actually not high-resolution grips that we're looking at. Our weather routing is we need to go into the offshore app to see the high-resolution grips um, because I would be interested as to why the PWE wants us to go up here. The, and I'm talking about this blue one. So if I click on this route, so any route that I click on, you'll see it gives me the, the weather data for that, um, that route. I, and I can run it. I can close this box over here. And I can run the route through, and it's giving me the data uh, that it thinks that we're getting the whole time. So it thinks we've got 12 knots, six knots, six knots. You know, if the PWG is right here, it's definitely faster up to this point, isn't it? We've got a lot further up the ladder. Um, and what I mean by that is we've made it a lot further up the lake. And that was, you know, that's something that you would really want to consider. 
kind of like sailing the um you know the longest board first it's that kind of th thinking um and something else with these routes down here you know if we were unsure i mean obviously we're going to sail to what we've got in front of us so if we have got let's go to back to the ecmwf for instance if we have got this breeze here like this and it does make sense to be on port tech going out here for sure we're going to do it but we would you know we know as soon as it starts going lighter we're going to want to start thinking about what's what are the people in in our division doing are they have they already gone are they carrying on personally if it was me i would want to be the first to go because we're going to um be going on to a long starboard tack talk to my kids about this all the time <laughs> about leading back um so you know just uh, i guess what i'm really getting at here is that this isn't a follow the follow the numbers um tool this is going to give you some ideas and you're going to then have to um think about how you interpret it i mean we're just looking at one very small part of the routing here at the moment i'm just talking about the wind you know there's a whole lot of other things that we might want to consider and look at um but before we do that let's come up here let's say we sailed up here and we got to here um, and we'll run our route again and have another go so yeah just um you know really think about how you're going to use the weather routing um think about you know how much risk you want to take uh versus the reward um you know and and the positioning of where you are against your fleet and how do we uh, you know and we can see our fleet and i will talk about that in a minute or in a few minutes um, and so you can look at where everyone else is and position yourself accordingly. Righty ho. So we've, this isn't really reflective of what happened because we're at the same, you know, this is five minutes ago and we've gone, you know, 100 miles or 50 miles up the, up the road. Um, and so you'll see now we've run this route again and, you know, Let's go to the, let's see why that model there wants us to go that way. Why does it want us to be on the other tack? And I don't think it's a now thing. I think it's possibly a further up the lake reason it wants us to go that way. So let's run the UKMO through a bit. Goes real light. And that's why it wants us to go out there. As it thinks that in, you know, how long is that? You know, 12 hours time or more than that, you know, 15, 16 hours time. It thinks that we're going to have a whole lot more breeze if we set ourselves up out here. So, you know, that's a, that's pretty interesting um, that it thinks that, you know, if we click onto another model at the same time, let's see what the other models think at that period in the in the race. And you can sort of see that they kind of agree. So that's pretty interesting. But these other guys have got a lot further up the race course. So they've, you know, if it were me, I'd much rather be up here than back here. You know, I can, the, you know, unless I'm sailing into a big hole, you'd want to think why it is that um, I would want to position myself out here. This seems incredibly risky. And so we have a look at the PWG, and this is very, we really need to go into the offshore app to properly look at this. Um, but before we do, let's go and have a look at some other stuff. So yes, we want to get there as fast as possible. I just better check on the time because I just do start talking. Um, you know, yes, we can just look at the wind and we can start analyzing our route. There are other factors we want to look at. So we're going to go into the tables and the graphs for a while um, and have a look. So trends, I talked about trends yesterday. Trends are super important. Obviously, we do have 
uh, the breeze dying off across all the models. Um, so that's, you know, between by here, we're going to know that we can um, get, we're going to get new weather routing. Um, so we, you know, by the time we get to here. And so see here, these start to split apart. You know, they think different things are going to happen, but we're going to get new uh, model data before we get to here. So that's that's fine. We know that the trend is going to go sort of from, you know, somewhere around 15 average down to six. So we can start thinking about um, sale selection, um, you know, and, and, and positioning. You know, where do we want to be positioned if it goes light against the fleet? Um, yeah, that sort of thing. True wind direction. Um, obviously, this is relative to our route. Um, so all this information that we look at in the tables is based on the high resolution data. Um, so this is based off the weather routing. And we can, you know, look through what all the, um, you know, true wind angle true wind direction and uh, you know you look at that true wind direction as it goes light you know yeah there's a fair bit of fair bit of um differentiation there but that's what happens when it goes light so you know i don't know whether you ever see the term light and variable uh models and uh do struggle when it gets basically below five knots you know you are going to see things going from different directions. And, and I guess that's sort of what I was saying before about I would just be, when it went really light like that, I'd want to be as far up the ladder as I could be. Um, not, unless you had a really good reason to take a flyer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've got later in the race, we can see that we're going to have a bit of rain. And uh, the reason I'm looking at the graphs is I just want to sort of quickly get an overview of what's going on. Uh, we see our cape levels do go up a bit. So this is something we'd want to keep an eye on, you know, for tomorrow night. Um, you know, once we've got, as the forecasts are updating, we want to know, you know, is, are, are we going to get thunderstorms? Are we going to need to be prepared? You know, we see something, you know, some nasty clouds coming on across the, the lake. Are we going to want to be prepared to reduce sail really quickly? Um, so, you know, that's, Again, that's helping us with our planning. We're thinking about it um, and using the tools to help us sail better. Temperature, you know, may not, you may not think it's a big consideration, but, you know, during the night, do we, um, you know, we need to make sure that everyone on board is wearing appropriate gear. They're keeping warm. Um, you know, we've got hot soup or whatever. So, you know, human being factors. The pressure is a matching up with what you know the barometer that we have on board, that sort of thing. And here's our wave height. Uh, we talked about this a bit yesterday, and we can actually look at the different um, wave states. So this is the combined wind wave and swell. We could look at just the wind wave. You'll see that as that, uh, you know, of course, as that wind dies down, the wind wave goes down with it. So um, our, our uh, wave model is not just um, making stuff up. It's pretty uh, representative of what we think is happening with the wind. You'll see that there is going to be some residual swell left behind. Um, and that, you know, that because that looks like that's slightly different to our wind wave, you know, that could actually <laughs> make it not that much fun when that wind went away. And we'll see if we do even have a secondary swell. Yes, there's some little bits there, but hardly, hardly anything. And I, I, and you'll see where it's along the bottom here. That means that it's not recording any. There's nothing. And I expect there would be no tertiary. So that was our heights. We can look at that for all di the direction and everything else. And come down here and we'll see that when we ran that route before, we did have that warning for the roll in the PWG. Uh, basically, there must have been more um, wave action up that.
I fear we may have lost Nick again. I think you're right. I'll just send him a quick message um, so he doesn't Thank keep you. talking to no one. <laughs> oh, that's um, annoying. Normally he has such a great um, connection. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, while we're waiting for him, do you want to get a, a little jump into the um, using the uh, the Iridium Go and, and connectivity there? Um, yeah, I'll just start my video. Um, okay. Hi, so I'm Kieran. I'm part of the support team, and um, I'll just take over while Nick's away. So um, when you use the Iridium Go, you need to use the offshore app. It's the only way to get the um, files, the routing and the grid files. And the offshore app is designed to compress the weather data so that you can get it through the really low speed Iridium Go connection. Um, when you use the offshore app, you can use it on a web connection, on your, home, on your cellular or internet, you can use it on the Go exec, email, there's lots of different ways you can use it. So um, yeah, Nick's going to show you a little bit of that when he goes into the offshore app, how you switch over to use the Iridium Go. Um, but yeah, looks like he's back again, so I'll leave him to it. How long have I been gone for? Well, a couple of minutes. I was having a great old time. I know, I sent you a message, so if it happens again, just check your WhatsApp. Yep. Can't see that either. All right, I'll go back to where I was. Just having a look. Sorry, yeah, I was just having a little chat about Iridium Go and how you get it with the offshore app and stuff. Okay. I will. So where was I up to? Mm, yeah. Acceleration roll. Yeah, I was just talking about that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so we've got our vertical acceleration, and. You know, if this is above 0.2, it's actually um, pretty rough and, um, and and throwing us around a bit. And slamming incidents, we have very little. So that's us, our boat smashing into waves, which race boats tend to do. <clears throat> so we do have a whole lot of, sorry, it really puts me off when um, <laughs> when I disappear. <laughs> Uh, we do have, for each route, we do have all of the information along the route here in the tables. This is where we want to come and check our, um, our boat speed, um, you know, and our boat speed versus our um, polars. So, you know, can I go that fast, basically? So... You come in here and have a check of all of your, your boat speeds. And then you may need to go back and change your polars. The summary is just a nice way to compare all the different models. How long is it taking? What's my average speed? What's the maximum wind speed for the, the, the passage? Maximum gusts? All that sort of stuff is in here. So again, planning. Um, thinking about what sails you might need. How you might stack your sails. You know, which ones do we need first? I know when we're two-handed sailing, this is something that we think about a lot, um, is what, what are we likely to need next? You know, planning ahead is, is everything um, and makes your life easier. Um, we can export our route if we want to. So if we wanted to put this into a nav tool, we can export the route and put the route into the the, the navigation tool. What I would do is I would be picking um, key waypoints and especially that I wanted to sail to um, in the next, you know, however long, um, you know, next four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, um, just so that we've got something clear that we're sailing to on board um, and where we're headed and, you know, and uh, sort of navigation wise. Um, and you can select um, the different models to export, and you can actually also set up to export your waypoints. Um, right, I think we should probably go over and just really quickly look at the offshore app, uh, mainly just to lead into what we're going to do next time. 
Um, I'll just stop sharing and share again. <clears throat> Okay, cool. So we are now in the offshore app. Um, I could be using this on an iPad, on an Android tablet, um, you know, Samsung, Huawei, whatever you want, have. Um, I'm a big uh, Apple fan. Uh, so I use a Mac and I use an iPad and I have an iPhone. So um, you'll probably often hear me talking about that, but it doesn't mean to say that we don't semi-love PC users and Android users. Uh, we have a lot of banter in the office about that, um, especially with uh, mine and Karen's boss who has a PC and an Android. Um, so anyway, in here, we need to zoom out it's my waypoints um oh this is something i didn't talk about yesterday and i should have so you'll see here on my map i actually downloaded a bunch of stuff before and you'll see we have all these different um warnings and uh, well they are warnings they're gmdss warnings and they are actually taken from uh, the relevant met area and we convert them into images. And so if we look at this one, I click on that, um, it's going to talk about um, this low, and I click on it, and this is actually what it's all based on. That's what that that picture is based on. And so we actually um, use machine learning to decode this writing, and it gives us these warnings. So it's just a nice... Um, thing to know that if something is coming your way, it will show up in here um, and give you that warning, um, you know, and even before the race. And I'm sure you, the, the, you know, there's plenty of, um, I, and I know that there's plenty of comms that you guys get um, weather-wise coming into the race, but just when you're at on the water, if you update and you get the GMDSS and you see this um, and there's there's one of these icons in, in your area, then um, you want to, read it and have a look. Um, I think, Kieran, when I went off into the Netherlands before, um, was talking about uh, settings for, uh, you know, on your SAT connections. Uh, you'll see here, um, I've downloaded 42 megabits of data. It's a lot. It's a huge amount. Um, I did that because I was on my web connection at home. So the offshore app, is not just for satellite use you can use it on whether you're tethered to a phone uh whether you're connected to starlink whether your um, home wi-fi you just change whatever your connection type is and it works on that um so again the same as what we did before we would come in here and we'd set up all our waypoints what you can see here from what i've run is this is actually a high resolution area. So this is a, a PWG 1K resolution area. Um, and then you'll see as I go forwards in time, I had, I'd actually put the start time in the future and it will go from that one kilometer resolution area. And then as I move through it, it goes into the 8K resolution area. And as I go up the lake, it would actually go and see that's that box there. That's the area that um, that we have for that resolution. And I won't. And then we actually go into another 8K resolution up here. So that's why they're changing um, boxes. And if I looked at it, if I look at something like the ECMWF, that's actually just going to cover my whole area in 9K. So. Just so you have a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about here, <clears throat> I am going to wrap this up pretty quickly, uh, pretty shortly, sorry. Um, I click on download, and in here, this is where I'm going to change all these settings. And this is we're going to what we're really going to talk about in the next webinar is how I set this up. But, you know, super quickly, um, I would change my, if I was on a, an Iridium Go, connection I could change my time step um, 
and the number of days. I mean, I know I'm only get, I'm not going to be out there for more than I mean, I can even go probably go down to three. Um, and I can change the resolution that I'm downloading of my grips because I can't download those high resolution grips um, on a Go connection. I could change all the models if I wanted to, um, as in to which one, which grips I'm getting. The weather routing is always going to download all of the um, the the models, and the, the the routing file is a really small size. So the grip we're really visualizing what we're looking at with the grips. Um, if I was near the end of the race and I just wanted to, um, you know, I actually did want to download. I've I've done this when I've been sailing before. You know, let's say I was up here and I just wanted to get this small little area. I actually would come in here and change my grub area. So you'll see there we've got all the, uh, the high resolution areas pop up on the screen. Um, and I would change this download area to be really small. So that I could actually, I could perhaps get the ECMWF 9K or the NAM or um, the PWG high res um, or the PWE high res. And so I could actually, um, you know, get that little area, but I might just need to choose, um, you know, one model or, or whatever. And you'll see that, we, you know, our, our file size has gone down dramatically already. Uh, that was probably more the changes I made over here. But if I went to high res, yeah, I would need to turn off um, one of these high res models. But I could just get the EC, for instance. Um, all my other parameters over here, um, we can change those. Um, if I wanted to change some of my weather routing settings, I can do that in here. Um, sorry, I'm not going to go too far into this. I just want to quickly go through it in case you want to go and have a play. Um, and I can change all those things I changed before. I click on next here. And I can put satellite imagery in there. I've got the YB events. Um, I'll probably get, I'll actually just go back and look at how we set that up before we leave. Or oh, maybe we can do that in the next one. Um, but you are going to be able to, and this is what I keep talking about, being able to see people on uh, where they are. You can download uh, the YB tracking data in here. And then I would be downloading um, my grips and uh, I can choose my connection, Redium Go, Redium Go Exec, Satellite, de depending on what connection you have. So if I just download those, I just want to talk about something that we see when we download these that I sort of mentioned yesterday but haven't really touched on. Um, <clears throat> these numbers over here are really important to know. This is our grib update time. So this is when the this is when this grib that we've downloaded was updated. So this is everything I'm looking at here is based on the time zone of my computer. So I'm looking at and so at 7.10 this morning, this ECMWF Global 9K grib was produced. Was was had so it I know that it started at um Z, uh, 12Z, so uh 12 um GMT or UTC. Um and it actually takes seven hours from initial conditions through to when it's actually produced. Um so that's how much computing goes on. Um, but we've got, yeah, it's more, just more important that we know that that's when it's updated. Um, and so we know that that's a new data, um, but also we might be wanting to run our weather routing at whatever it is in your local time. But, at, you know, for me, I might want to be running this at 7.20 because I know that the ECMWF is the second to last model to update. Um, and so I can just, and, and the Spire updates after that. Here I might be able to post a link to, when the models update. But it's a super important information to know is when the models update. Um, and you'll see there I've downloaded um, the other data as well. And see my weather route there, that's at 12.10, that's the time here in New Zealand at the moment. Um, so that's why that says that time. So yeah, important to know when the models update. Not something you need to check every time. I mean, sometimes it is, but you, the software will also tell you if you've got old grips. Um, and you'll see here, I, you know, it ran that route for that little area there. And I will come back here and yeah, so we're going to run through this 
all everything in the offshore app in our next one we're going to specifically talk about the race um and we're going to basically look at the offshore app the whole time so i'll stop sharing and i will apologize for my internet dropping out and i'll make sure i get that fixed i think i need a new modem and um yeah and if there's any questions that kieran hasn't answered i'm happy to have a go at answering them Um, I didn't get any questions at all, so everyone must have been really listening to what you were saying, so it was good. Um, I did notice a couple of times also your screen went really weird, when, you, especially when you were in the Polars page, and it went right. really like, it was, it was quite opaque and you couldn't see some of the stuff, so if anyone's got any questions, just send us a message into support and we'll, we'll help you out. Cool. Uh, I must be really one. happy to come on. I'll throw one quick question out there. Uh, Nick, you talked about as uh, as you're moving, you know, your boat, as it were, up the lake and generating a new a new route from from where you are, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> changing the size of that box for the the grib sizes. And I'm sure you'll get into this a, a little bit more tomorrow. With all those different overlays of different uh, granularities. Uh, does that all happen automatically in the download? Um, yes, yeah, so we are selecting our resolution. So um, if we're getting the high resolution data, the highest resolution, then that's going to be a really big file size, but that might depend on our connection, you know, if, if we or we might go, you know, we, I, I really want that high resolution data for this part of the race um yeah so you do need to change the resolution that you're downloading okay. um yourself does that answer the question is i think so i think yeah. so uh the and but the the areas we as you move the boats along the map as they move along the map the and you're moving between different high-res areas they will automatically pop up okay yeah i think that's that's mostly what i was yeah. after okay um all right uh well if uh no one had any questions at least in the q a uh for uh for the evening if anybody wants to throw anything in there we can hang on for a minute or two if you're reasonable if your typing skills are up to it um and uh i'll keep an eye on that but if not you know thank you again again a lot kind of like last night uh, i don't know if uh, anybody else's head is swimming a little bit uh like mine, but um, a lot to a lot to go over there, uh, a lot to chew on. Um, I do yeah. not believe that the video for last night was available before we started today, but since we have now a two week gap, we'll make sure that both today's and yesterday's videos are available in enough time for people to be able to watch them if there was anything you wanted to check on or missed or whatever, you go back and check them on the Mac Race YouTube channel uh, before we uh, we get to the next uh, the next session, which is uh, I think two weeks away because of our holiday. Um, yeah, I think it's tenth uh, for you guys. Uh, sounds about right. Sounds about right. Um, all right, if. Uh, that's all we have for this evening then thank you guys very very much you guys have a great day um and uh we'll see everybody in uh in a couple of in a week or two awesome thanks very much right. thanks